Hi, uh, this is Amit Kirti here. In this video, I would like to talk about binary search algorithm. The items for discussion for binary search algorithm are the binary search algorithm introduction, I have binary search algorithm example, then the binary search algorithm itself. Then we'll try to analyze the algorithm using an example. And then finally, we will see the time complexity of binary search algorithm. Now binary search is a method of searching an element in a sorted list of items. So the basic criteria for to do binary search algorithm is that the element should already be sorted. So if you have a set of elements which are not sorted, then probably you will have to first sort the elements before you can actually use binary search. Now binary search, if I have to summarize in one single line, it, it is a method of repeatedly dividing the sorted list of elements into halves and then searching for an element. It is a pseudo divide and conquer technique because uh, a divide and conquer technique actually divides the elements into two halves and processes both the halves. Whereas in case of binary search, what we do is we actually search or process only one half of the elements. So we will see more details going ahead. Now for binary search, Let's assume that we have a set of elements from 1 to 9 as we can see here and we are actually trying to say search an element 1 in this list. So binary search algorithm what it does is it takes the middle of the element every time and searches whether it matches the element that I am trying to find. So in this case I have these elements from 1 to 9 and the middle element happens to be 5. So I actually go ahead and search whether 1 is equal to 5. Now since 1 is not equal to 5, I need to decide with what I should do. So actually what I do is, since 1 is less than 5, I need to search in this left half. So what I do is, I divide my, or, or stop my criteria as the to search the elements in this left half of this array. So if I see this left half, as I said, I have to search with the mid middle element to check whether one matches with the middle element or not. So I have four elements, one, two, three, and four. So middle elements happen to be two of them, which is two and three. So when I have a problem that I have two middle elements, I need to choose one. So what I do is I choose the lower of the two and I try to search whether one matches with this middle element. Now, since one does not match with the middle element and one is actually less than two, I have to go and search in the left half of two. Now in the left half of 2 again, since I have just one element that is 1, I go and search with 1 and I see that 1 matches with 1, so I have found out the element. So what we are actually doing is every time we try to search with the, to search whether this element matches with the middle element, if it matches it's fine, else we check whether the element that we are searching is less than the middle element or greater than the middle element. If it happens to be less than the middle element, then we search in the left half. Now let's take another example. Let's assume I'm trying to search for element 22 in this list. So as I said, first what we try to do is we search whether 22 matches with the middle element. So since 22 doesn't match with the middle element and 22 happens to be greater than the middle element, we go to the right half and check whether the element matches with any element in the right half. So to check whether it matches with the any element in the right half, we have four elements in the right half, six, seven, eight, and nine. And then there are two middle elements, seven and eight. So as we said, we take the lower of the two. So we compare seven and 22. We see that seven and 22 doesn't match, but we see that 22 is greater than seven. So we actually have to go and compare the right half of seven with the element 22. So what do we do? We go to the right half of this where we have two elements. So since there are just two elements and the middle element will actually be the lesser of the two. So we will go and compare 8 and 22. We see that 8 doesn't match with 22. And since 22 is greater than 8, so we have to go to the right half of 8. In this case, right half contains just one element which again is the middle element for this particular half. So we will compare 9 and 22. We see that 9 doesn't match with 22 and there are no more elements. We are actually done with the search. So this was a case where we went to the right half 
of the middle element and we actually did not find 22. Now this is the algorithm for binary search. Now it takes two parameters. One is the area of elements and the other is the key that we are trying to search. So if we take the same elements that we had taken previously, that is from 1 to 9, what we do is we initialize L, the, which represents the lower bound as 0. 0 represents the, in the index of the first element, that is the index of 1. And right or the right half uh, upper bound is n minus 1. So it will write R will represent this particular element. Then what do we do? We actually um, check while L is less than R and then continue with this while loop till we either find an element or we don't find an element. So one way of analyzing this particular algorithm is if we represent it in the form of a tree, the elements that we have, have has been represented in the, in the form of a tree where the root is actually the middle element, the next root is the next middle element and subsequently we actually form the tree like this. So if the first middle element is 5, then the middle element for the left of 5 actually happens to be 2 and the middle element on the right hand side is 7. So in this way we have formed a tree and then let's assume we are trying to search for the element 1. So we have a tree like this and the array of elements is also represented here and the key that we are trying to search is 1. So what do we do? m is equal to l plus r by 2. So that is 1 plus 9 by 2 or rather 0 plus 8 by 2 however you look at it. m will actually point to the element 5 which happens to be the middle element in this case. So we check it does the key match with a, a, the, the, the middle element 5. We see that it doesn't match. Then what do we do? We check whether the key that is 1, is it less than a of m? In this case, yes, the key is less than a of m. So what do we do? Our right upper bound or the right bound is equal to m minus 1. So since m was here, our upper bound goes to m minus 1 that is here. So what we are effectively telling is that the lower bound is here and the upper bound happens to be here, which effectively means I need to check for 1 in the left half of this array. So what I have to do? I have to go to the left half of this tree. So then what do I do? I again go in the while loop and then m is nothing but l plus r by 2. That is nothing but l is here and r actually points to the element 4. So the middle element is nothing but 1 plus 4 by 2 that is index 0 plus 3 by 2 which is nothing but 1.5 or rather we will take it as 2. So we check whether the element matches with 2. So 1 does it match with 2? It, it does not match. So then we check whether 1 is less than a of m. Is 1 less than this? Yes. So what do we do? We set the right or the upper bound as m minus 1. So what do we do? L still points to this element. M also, the R, R also points to this element. And then we will again go up in the while loop. And m will be set as L plus R by 2. So L is also 1, R is also 1. So L plus R by 2 will again point to this element. Then we check whether 1 matches with 1 and 1 actually matches with 1. So we have a successful match here. So we'll come out of this while loop here and then we will return with the value M which happens to be the index of the element. So let's also take an example of 22 and see how it fits into the whole uh, algorithm. So initially L will be 0 which points to 1 and R will be equal to N minus 1 which actually points to 9. So as usual since left L is less than or equal to R, we calculate M as L plus R by 2. So in this case again it will start uh, M will be pointing to the element 5. So we compare whether 22 matches with 5. Since 22 doesn't match with 5, we will first next check whether the, the key 22 is it less than A of M. Since 22 is not less than 5, it happens to be greater than 5. So we go into this else part and what do we do? The lower bound, we set it as middle element plus 1. So now the lower bound starts pointing to 6 and the upper bound will still be pointing to 9. So then what do we do? We have two elements as the middle elements. Then we will pick the lower of the two that is 7 and then we will actually try to compare whether 7 matches with 22. So since 7 doesn't match with 22, 
we check whether 7 is less than 22 sorry 22 is less than 7 since 22 is not less than 7 we will go into the else part and we will set l as m plus 1 so l will point to 8 and r will still keep pointing to 9 and then we will go up in the loop and we'll set m as l plus r by 2 so the lower of these two will be set as m which happens to be 8 so next we check whether 8 matches with 22 since key that is 22 is not equal to a of m we will come here and we check whether 22 is less than 8 since 22 is again not less than 8 we will go to the else part and l moves ahead and l will start pointing to 9 so l also points to 9 r also keeps pointing to 9 and we will go up in the while loop and set m as l plus r by 2 which is again the same element so we check next we check whether 9 matches with 22 since 9 doesn't match with 22 we are actually done with checking these elements and then l will actually move ahead and then we will go up in the while loop since l is not equal to r we will actually come out of this while loop and we will return m as say minus 1 so this is how the algorithm works so this uh, if we represent it in the tree form and parse through like this you can see the how binary search works now let's try to analyze the time complexity of binary search algorithm the time complexity for binary search algorithm in worst case happens to be theta of log n now in order to understand this we will again take the the elements in the form of a tree and then let's assume that i am trying to search for one so what we saw was when we were trying to search for one we first search with five then with two then with one so basically what we did was to search one all i needed was i had to do three searches so out of nine elements in order to find out the element i did three searches so i need a mechanism of connecting this number three that is search result with the total number of elements nine so how do i do that suppose we try to calculate log of nine to the base two so log of nine to the base two can approximately be written as log 8 to the base 2 and log 8 to the base 2 can be written as log 2 cube to the base 2 since 2 cube is 8 so I can write it as log 2 cube to the base 2 now by property of log we know that a raised to b if it is of the form of log a raised to b to the base a then b will come here it will be 3 log 2 to the base 2 now we know that log 2 to the base 2 is 1 so this actually turns out to be 3 into 1 which is 3. So what I effectively did was the search result 3 I mapped it to the number of elements 9. So 3 is nothing but approximately equal to log 9 to the base 2. So the time complexity to calculate a binary search is actually of the order of log n. Now let's take the failure example that is 22. So when I was searching for 22 I actually searched with 5, then with 7, then with 8, then with 9 and then finally I figured out that the element does not exist. So basically the number of searches is 1, 2, 3 and 4. So I did 4 searches for 9 elements. So again I need to, uh, I need a formula to connect this element 4 with this number 9. Now suppose I write something like this 1 plus log 9 to the base 2. So how can I write this? It can be written approximately equal to 1 plus log 2 to the base 2 cube which is nothing but log uh, 2 cube is 8. So uh, log 9 I have written as approximately log 8 and log 8 can be written as log 2 cube. So again as we saw previously 3 can come here and this will become log 2 to the base 2 which is nothing but log 2 to the base 2 happens to be 1 so this will be 1 plus 3 which happens to be 4 so what I actually did was number of searches for a failure case which is 4 I tried to connect it to a number say 1 plus log 9 to the base 2 that is 4 is actually equal to 1 plus log n to the base 2 so if I have n elements and I do an unsuccessful search then the number of comparisons is actually 1 plus log n to the base 2 so if I had 16 elements 
I would have done five searches. If I had 32 elements, I would have done six searches. So this actually belongs to theta of log n. So the time complexity of uh, binary search is actually log n. So in fact, if you if you have any tree algorithm, the amount of search that you actually have to do before you reach a successful, uh, before you reach a failure case is actually at the max log n. In case of success, you will have log n or less than log n. So thanks for watching this video.